Okay, let's talk about the Texas Educator Certification Course Subjects 4 to 8 exam, and here is the test code. So if you're watching this video, I assume you are uh, going to um, or you're striving to become a teacher in Texas, and this is the particular certification exam you need to take to be teaching uh, to at the 4 to 8 level in um, Texas. So um, anyways, welcome to the video, and the whole purpose of this video is to take a look at a math practice prom that you should be able to handle pretty well if you're fully prepared for this particular exam. So we're going to get into that in a moment. Uh, before we do so, let me go ahead and introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tabba Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher, and over the last several years, I've constructed many online math courses to include a Texas Educator Certification Course Subjects 4 to 8 exam uh, for this particular test code. I'm going to leave a link to that, uh, my math prep course, um, in the description of this video. But all my courses, I do a lot of research and I, I take a look at what's on these exams in detail and I try to build them, uh, you know, a math course that is going to be, you know, as best as I can. Uh, aligned to prepare you for um, this exam. So kind of a good way to think of what's on this exam is uh, uh, more advanced high school level mathematics. So you're going to need to know more than the elementary level certification exams for sure. So not just basic algebra and geometry, you're going to have to know some more advanced stuff, more, you know, like trigonometry, etc. So you're going to have to really, you know, uh, make sure you prepare. And hopefully you uh, already have taken a look at uh, the level of math you're going to need to know for this exam. So with that being said, let's go ahead and take a look at this problem here. Again, you know, you should be able to handle this pretty easy. This is basic high school level algebra. And the way I like to do these problems is, um, you know, first, uh, you know, just uh, let you, you know, those folks out there who can do the prom, just pause the video and knock it out and do it. And then I like to give a bit of a hint for those of you who need a little bit of a hint. And then obviously I'm going to solve the problem. Okay, so for those of you who know what this is and how to solve it, go ahead and pause the video and do so. And uh, for those who need a little bit of a hint, here it comes. So first of all, we've got to know what's going on here, right? What's, what, what's the situation here? Well, what we're dealing with is a system, okay? System of linear equations, okay? And when you're solving systems, there's basically three main approaches you can take. There is the graphing method, substitution method, and the elimination or linear combination method. And there's an, even another method that we can use uh, with matrices, but we don't want to have too much fun in this video. We're going to contain our fun <laughs> just with this stuff here. So um, hopefully this is bringing back some memories. You're like, oh, you know, hopefully good memories too, right? Uh, so you're like, oh, yes, okay, now I kind of get it. Okay, so what we're dealing with here is a system. And... Um, now I'm going to kind of speak to, I'm going to solve this, but I'm going to speak a little bit more about the main concepts of systems. There's a, this is a huge topic in algebra and there's much more, you know, there's many more topics related here, uh, you know, um, how to uh, solve uh, systems of uh, linear inequalities, uh, linear programming. So I can really kind of go off on various tangents, but let's just highlight the main most important thing. So basically kind of what's going on is a system a system like this of uh, uh, a linear system is basically we have one line and we have another line, kind of just visually the kind of way to think about it. So you have line one and line two. So if I was going to put this uh, these two lines on x y axis, okay, and I'm not I'm saying these equations represent these lines, but you would have one line here and another line say this way. The intersection point, okay, is a specific xy coordinate. That's where that xy coordinate represent the, rep, represents the solution to a linear system. Now, that's if the system has a solution, okay? If these lines are parallel, okay, the system wouldn't have a solution. So, yes, systems uh, can have a solution, a unique solution, or they can have no solutions, or they can have infinitely many solutions. So, again, a lot of areas uh, for, you know, that you need to understand about uh, systems, but this is just the overarching big 
you know, kind of principles here that we're discussing. So one way you, you know, when you're first studying systems is, hey, oh, you can kind of graph these lines and then look to see, hey, where do these lines intersect? And then, you know, point out that specific X, Y coordinate. But that's a very impractical method. So really, the things that you really have to kind of be thinking about is the substitution and or elimin uh, elimination linear combination method. These are kind of like our main tools, if you will, to solve systems uh, like this. So there is your hint. And now hopefully you're like, yes, I know what to do. But let's go ahead and get into this now. I'm going to go ahead and uh, use the uh, elimination learning combination method. I will say at this point, I can't, I don't want to turn this into a full lesson on this because this is going to go too long. So if you don't know what I'm doing, you know, I'm kind of explaining things as I go. But, um, you know, if you don't really, if you're getting lost, if you will, that's just an indication, hey, you're going to have to get into some, maybe a course like mine or, or do whatever review you need to do. Okay. All right. So the elimination combination method um, is it's a great tool. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, change this second equation here such that instead of a Y, I'm going to make this a 2Y, okay, a positive 2Y, because then I can go ahead and uh, easily solve this equation. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to multiply the entire thing by 2. So remember in algebra, if I had, let's say, 2x is equal to 5, and I'll multiply both sides of the equation by 3, for example, I end up with 6x is equal to 15. Well, this uh, equation here and this equation here are equivalent, algebraically speaking, okay? It's just uh, they're written differently. So... Uh, when you do what in algebra, the main idea is whatever you do to one side of the equation, as long as you do the other side completely, you don't really change uh, the you know uh, equivalency of the equation. It's still the same thing. It just looks differently. So we want to use that to our advantage here. We're dealing with systems. So I'm going to multiply this entire bottom equation by 2. So let's keep the first equation. Okay, my first equation is x minus 2y is equal to three. I don't want to mess with that, but this bottom equation, I'm going to multiply everything by two. So that's going to give me six X plus two Y is equal to four. Okay. Now the reason why I did that is now I can uh, do what we call a linear combination. I can, I can add down. Okay. And uh, the reason why to add down, in other words, I'm going to combine these two. I'm going to take this equation and kind of smack it into this equation, you know, combine them into one. And when I do that, I eliminate the y variable. So what's going to end up happening, I have x plus 6x, that's 7x, and then a negative 2y plus 2y goes away. That's why I wanted a 2y there, so that goes away. And now I have 3 plus 4 is 7, so I'm left with this nice equation, 7x is equal to 7, so x is going to be equal to 1, okay? So... I'm halfway home. So because remember, I have two lines here. The uh, solution is going to be an x, y point. I just figured out that this part of the answer is x equals 1. So now I just need to find out what y is. So in order to do that, I can use uh, either one of these equations. I'm going to use the uh, first equation here So uh, to figure out what y is. So we have x minus 2y is equal to 3. So I'm going to plug in 1 for this x. Now I know instead of x, its its value is 1. So I'm going to substitute that x for 1. So I have 1 minus 2y is equal to 3. I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides of the equation. I have negative 2y is equal to 2. So y is going to be equal to negative 1. Okay, so that is my xy point where these two lines cross. If I was to graph them, is at 1, negative 1. And we can check that solution. Let's use this other equation, 3x plus y. Let's just plug in these values for x and y uh, just to make sure this checks. So we said that x is equal to 1 and y was equal to negative 1. Let's see if this balances out. So 3 times 1 is 3 plus negative 1. Is that equal to 2? 3 plus negative 1 is 2. 2 is equal to 2. That's a true statement. So these solutions are good to go. All right. So there you have it. Now, for those of you out there that were able to do this problem right off the bat without any hints, I can, you know, congratulate you, give you a thumbs up. But that no means is, you know, that a, 
you know, verification that you're ready to go. That's just one little subset. And quite frankly, if I had to put this problem on a scale of uh, easy to hard, you know, you know, uh, this is like a pretty easy problem, you know, um, somewhat, you know, basic. So um, I'm not trying to tear down your achievement <laughs> if you got this right. But, you know, you, there's a lot more that you got to be ready for for this particular uh, exam. Now, if you struggle with it, don't panic either. Use this all for feedback. OK, the main idea here, you know, uh, with these and the, these videos I make is to say, hey, here's a little problem. You should be able to handle it. You know, you know, maybe this is a particular topic you need to, you know, you know, strengthen in. But give yourself enough time to study for these certification exams. That's the main idea. OK, there is a, um, you know, they are professional level exams and it's not unheard of to have teachers, you know, fail and have, take these uh, tests uh, more than once, more, you know, two or three times. OK, it's actually more common than you probably think. OK, uh, so just don't want to, you know, be that person if you can avoid it. You know, the, the main idea is to study, you know, um, you know, beforehand because it's just going to benefit you as a teacher anyways. But uh, anyways, let's go ahead and wrap up this video again. I'm going to go ahead and leave a link uh, to my test prep course for this particular uh, test in the description of this video. Again, all my courses have taken me several years to build. So I think you'll really uh, appreciate what I have there. If you're new to my YouTube channel, um, hopefully consider subscribing. I've been on YouTube for several years. I already have hundreds of uh, videos on my channel that can help you prepare for this particular exam. So you might want to check that out. If you enjoyed the video, definitely appreciate a thumbs up and leave me some feedback. Um, you know, what's your story? Are you going from uh, high school to college to teaching? Uh, are you going from, you know, high school to, you know, a different level? You know, uh, maybe you're switching careers. Maybe you're retired in one career and you're going into another career. You're going to become a teacher. OK, um, it's always you know fascinating to me to just to hear the stories of, you know, how people become teachers. You know, I know I didn't take a straight route, you know, from, um, you know, uh, high school to college. I went <laughs> I went in the Marine Corps, did other things. But, you know, I found myself as a teacher. I enjoyed teaching. But the one thing about um teaching that I've discovered was it's one thing being good, you know, being kind of a natural teacher or enjoying uh, teaching. But when you're teaching in a classroom and you're dealing with kids, you're also so many other, there's so many other roles you play, you know, you know, uh, you're handling all kinds of other issues that you, that until you actually deal with, you know, you're, you're, you, it's just going to take experience to get there, you know, uh, classroom management, um, you know, dealing with parents, dealing with all different types of issues. This is the art of teaching. And I will, all I can say there is that, you know, really latch on to those professional or those teachers, veteran teachers, and those ones that have been teaching for several years. They are like, you know, gold in terms of helping you out. Listen to them and then build your own style up. So don't, you know, beat yourself up, especially like your first year teaching. That's always going to be <laughs> like a boot camp. That's always going to be like, wow, you know, what did I, I did some good things, bad things. I don't think anyone has a perfect first year teaching. It's just unheard of. So, you know, you, you do have to give yourself time to build your experience and up. Listen to those uh, veteran teachers and then find your own style for what works. But, you know, before you even get to that point, you have to take care of getting your certifications. Uh, so getting through tests like this is, you know, um, you know, in an important professional milestone. OK, so with that being said, I definitely w wish you all the best in your teaching career. Thank you for your time and have a great day.